Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Wileam here. I hope everybody's doing well out there. It's been a while since I did a tech news. There's definitely been a lot of news and I do want to talk about it. So let's go ahead, jump right in. So right now on the Fuji Rumors website, we do see news that the X-H2 will not be coming out until 2022. This makes a lot of sense because this year, Fuji Films has been concentrating quite a bit on the GFX line, the medium format, the large format line, which has been doing really well. We all know that the 100S is just coming out and it's getting some really great reviews it looks like it's going to be a really exciting camera but for the X-H2, we've known for a while now that the managers have said that they really won't be releasing that until they get the next generation of sensor technology. And most likely we're going to get the next generation of processors to go along with that. There's probably going to be more processing that's going to be needed. And also keep in mind that with the X-H2, that's going to be the flagship camera, which means probably later on that year or the year following, we're going to be seeing the X-T5 and probably the X-T... 50 or is it going to be the X-T40 since they've kind of broken up that lineup but it'll be interesting to see how all of that's going to flow together but with the X-H2 I'm definitely going to look forward to seeing what they're going to be doing with this particular camera and what type of new innovations that will be coming out for that now for the 100S I've already talked a little bit about it it looks to be something that Fuji Films is fully committed on flushing out which is the new large format medium format line and it looks to be very successful for them but what's equally exciting is that they are going to be coming out with a Mark II version of their 50 megapixel medium format camera. This is one that I've also talked about before in which I really thought that they needed to refresh this line, really add some capable video features to this product line as a great entry level camera. Now, I originally thought that the 100S was going to be the entry level at $6,000. They definitely did a great job of dropping down that price. But with the 50S Mark II, if they can get it around $3,500, that's going to be an amazing entry-level camera. Keep in mind that I'm speculating on the $3,500 price tag, but if they can actually drop it down that low, put in some of those awesome video features that Fujifilm is now really being known for, then it's going to be a very terrific entry-level camera and one that I would gravitate to over the 100S because I really don't need the 100 megapixels. What I really want is that large sensor and to be able to use it for my video needs that's what i really want and the 50 megapixels will be just fine for my needs so i'm really excited to see what the mark ii version is going to be and it looks like this year they're really concentrating on medium format and in this market it really seems like fuji films is going to be taking a dominating lead and they're going to be keeping that keep in mind that when you actually do produce a new camera line it's the lenses that really lag behind when you actually introduce introduce a new system. Remember when Sony introduced their full frame lineup, when their camera bodies got really good, what everybody complained about was the lack of native glass and it took years for Sony to actually develop their whole line. What's really good here is that Fujifilm has been really good at flushing out their initial G mount lenses. There's actually quite a lot of lenses to actually come out here and try. I particularly like the new 45 to 100. I thought I was gonna gravitate to the 32 to 64. The problem is, is that the zoom range isn't really terrific because it's just too small of a zoom range. Range. I really like the 45 to 100. The only issue that I have with the 45 to 100 when I was actually working with it is that 45 millimeters is not wide enough. So I would have to pair it with something like the 23 millimeter prime in order to have a good range for my hybrid needs. But it's definitely something that I need to play with a little bit more. And I'll have more to say on that as spring is quickly arriving. And I'll probably make a few vlogs about it. But when you compare this lens lineup to say the X mount lineup, you can tell that they still have quite a ways to go but this is light years in front of any company that wants to get into medium format so if canon nikon or sony wants to get into medium format this is going to be the hard part this is going to be the long leg because developing lenses takes quite a bit of time you could have a great camera body but without the lenses to back it up you really don't have anything i hope they actually continue to add more lenses to their lens roadmap to really flush it out kind of like what we see in the x mount format of course that's going to be many many years in order to get it to that point but their commitment to having a great lens lineup is what's really exciting about the gfx line of cameras right now so it's definitely an exciting year in terms of development we'll see what kind of product lineups people are 
we're going to have for this year. I have a feeling that it's going to be fairly light because they're going to be planning for more things to come in 2022. Hopefully by then things will be getting back to normal. Anyhow, that's all I have to talk about for this video. Again, I hope you're doing well out there and I'll see you in the next video.